Already in Left Tube and other lefty group comments sections, there is griping about how Warren was put in there as a Trojan horse because she's the establishment and is being used as a way to dilute Bernie's base. First off, Warren and Bernie, along with Representative Barney Frank, were all three saying the exact same things during Occupy Wall Street and both got popularity during that movement. In their core principles, they are fighting for the exact same thing, they just use different language. Bernie calls himself a democratic socialist, while Warren calls herself a capitalist. One uses shock and revolution power, while one soothes the nerves of people scared to death of commies, but agree the system is rigged. One uses very simple and easily repeatable messages, the other uses complex and detailed plans. That said, literally nothing they are proposing is anything a European social democrat would raise an eyebrow at. They both have their pet projects. But every single thing they have said would make both of them both capitalist and social democrats, and certainly not the classical definition of a democratic socialist. Even German-style co-determination that Warren has proposed, where half of all corporate boards will be made up of representatives of the workers, is looked on as old news for Germans, as they have had that since shortly after Nazi Germany fell. That said, Wall Street Democrats recently warned the Democratic Party that if Warren wins, they may consider sitting out donating to any party this election, or even back Trump. As any reading of the Weimar Republic history will tell you, capitalist elites are more comfortable with fascists than a socialist. I recently read an article called Bernie Sanders is in Trouble. In it, Bernie's campaign is slowing down. There are problems in his campaign organization, and he's dropping in the polls. This month, he's had a few highs of 22 and a few lows of 13, and the rest are somewhere in between. Warren, on the other hand, has ranges between 27% and 11%. In the interview, Bernie seemed rather unconcerned about the whole thing and seemed to not be trying to poach other candidates' voters, but instead bring in non-voters, something ridiculously hard to do, but something he certainly did in 2016. That makes me wonder if he's not as concerned about getting himself elected as getting himself or Warren elected and beat Biden one way or another. To understand this a little better, and to explain why the people griping on Facebook obviously are speaking from no position of actually understanding how Democratic primaries work, unlike in the general or some states in the Republican Party, there are no winner-take-all states. Everyone gets a proportion of delegates based on the number of votes they get. It's why calling the race in 2016 was so hard because while one candidate may have won the state, the other still got a large chunk of delegates, even though it was still less. As Bernie's strategy doesn't seem to be to steal anyone else's voters, but to keep his own voters and purely target non-voters, something many of the candidates just can't do, it really makes me wonder if he's playing to win or playing to get a progressive candidate elected. The fact that Bernie and Warren appear to 100% support each other and refuse to differentiate themselves from each other than in tiny ways makes me think they're playing to their strength and have already agreed to give the other their delegates depending on who has the most votes. Unlike in 2016, where there were only two candidates, this election was going to be flooded with candidates and dilute the voter pool no matter what. Taking on a heavyweight like Biden on their own was a super heavy lift. If this was a head-to-head -head between Bernie and Biden, it's likely he couldn't win unless Biden broke out in full dementia, as many Hillary supporters and former Bernie supporters partially blame Bernie for Trump in taking a month longer than Hillary in 2008 to support the frontrunner and not speaking out more for her. This grudge is both still real and powerful, but as a top two and three, they could combine their delegates and trounce Biden with their combo of delegates. The strategy is not to be in first place, but to stick to their strengths and be in second and third, and make that person making second win the presidency. It's a very viable strategy, which is why Warren is currently viewed as the most likely nominee according to many of the heads of the Democratic Party. Not because she can beat Biden, even though recent poll numbers show her ahead of Biden, but because she can get enough other candidates to give her their delegates. Neither Sanders nor Warren would give their delegates to Biden. Warren has a two-decade-long personal disagreement with Biden, and Sanders just wants a progressive. The opportunity hasn't raised its head yet, but while I don't see Bernie giving his delegates to anyone but Warren, there is a slim chance she could be convinced to give hers to maybe Harris or Castro or Booker if they could promise the regulation oversight and changes she wants in a detailed and goal-oriented way, but I don't see her giving them to anyone instead of Sanders except those three and still very unlikely. That said, none of these people have cracked double digits this month, and Booker is already hinting at dropping out. I also see those people I mentioned as more likely to give their delegates to Warren than Biden. 
If it comes down to a three-way race and their goals were to all beat each other and be first, until recently, Biden would win hands down. However, if the full goal is not Biden, then Bernie and Warren have a great chance of winning. Running mates? Who knows, maybe not the best to have two older and radically progressive candidates on the same ticket. Maybe a younger and slightly more centrist VP would be the smarter move to take on Trump and calm down the more moderate wing, similar to how Pence was able to calm the religious right into voting for Trump. But they will almost certainly give the other a good cabinet post position if they want it, if they share the delegates. Pure speculation here, but there may very well be a reason why Sanders is focusing on the usually Herculean task of targeting non-voters and isn't concerned about his campaign's hiccups. Maybe they aren't trying to win individually. Maybe they're trying to just ensure a progressive candidate wins. So thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. I'm sure there was nothing controversial about this and everyone will happily get along in the comments section, which you can do on the YouTube version of this video or my Facebook page, After School Democracy. Link in the show notes. Just a reminder that I'm Anubis2814 on YouTube and I have over 500 videos on different topics that I've made over the past 10 years. Please subscribe and if your podcast site has the option, give me a like or review. If you think what I have to say informed you, consider supporting my Patreon. I'll be doing this podcast weekly and try to get it out on the same day, so I hope to see you here next week, ready to be filled with new ideas. Take care. A big thank you goes out to Elias Garcia Guevara and Joe Taylor, who sponsor the show at $10 a month at the Wapawet level on Patreon. Please consider donating as well if you can, and thank you all for listening.